Hello and welcome to this video on horizontal analysis. I'm Dr. Fred Sutton and today I'll be showing you some brief information about the horizontal analysis and how it's used in companies and then how to calculate it. So as you can see here behind me I have basically I've taken the balance sheet that's focused it a little more on one specific area which is our current assets. So I have five different, excuse me, four different accounts in my total of my total current assets. So as you can see here, there's the 2013 values and my 2014 values. There's been a change in those values. And so here, what I will have is each of these, there's been a decrease or an increase. And we'll figure out what those are, and then we'll figure out the percent of change against that. So let's first compute the differences in each of the categories there in the accountants that we have, and then we will figure out the percentage of increase and decrease, and I'll walk you through that. So if we look here, in 2013, we had a change uh, from 8,000 to 12,000 2014. So we had a $4,000 increase. And then for my accounts receivable, as you can see here, we had an $8,000 balance in 2013 and then went to a $6,000 balance in 2014. So we dropped $2,000. And then in my supplies, I went from $6,000 in 2013 to $4,000 in 2014. 14, so I again had a $2,000 decrease. And then finally, in my inventory here, I went from $25,000 down to $20,000, which is a $5,000 increase. Uh, decrease, excuse me. So I have, a, I have one increase and three decreases there. Now, my total current assets was $45,000 in 2013, then it went to $42,000. So I had a $3,000 decrease. So that's how you compute those decreases and increases, basically just taking the base year uh, and the difference between the base year and then the next year. Now, again, now we're going to calculate the, the increase or decrease percentage. To figure that out, I'm going to take the first one, cash here, and we'll, it shows me an increase of $4,000. So I take my $4,000 here over my base year. Remember to always use the base year, so the year that you are basing it off of. So this one, we are basing it off of 2013. And so my increase would be 0 0.05, point, excuse me, 0 0.5, which is 50%. So that is my increase in my cash account from 2013 to 2014. So remember that you use the base year, so the year that you're starting with, for the, for the uh, increase or decrease. So if I do the next one here, I have $2,000. And remember, this is a negative decrease. So I have $2,000. I have $8,000 was my base. So therefore, I will have a negative 0.25, which is negative 25%. And so that's what I'll have here. All right. And so here on this one, for my supplies, I have a $2,000 decrease once again, but it's over the $6,000. So that gives me 0.33, which is 33 0.3% and that's a decrease. So I will have a negative 33.3% and that's a decrease there. And then finally in my inventory here, my last one of the accounts and I will also do the current, total current assets, but I have 5,000 and that is over the 25,000 base year. And that gives me a total of 0 0.20 negative, which is negative 20%. So I will have a negative 20%. I don't need to put that in there since that's already a negative. I'm going to put the percentage here. All right. And la uh, the final thing we'll do is the total current assets, which is my $3,000. Negative $3,000 over the $45,000. Now, if I put that in the calculator, I will cal have it. It will come out to be six point uh, six seven percent, and that would be a negative because this was a negative here. Now, what 
let me go over some of the things of why companies will use this. Well, we want to see there's some of the changes here. And there could be, and what we do is then figure out what is the reasons for these changes. Obviously, we had a 50% increase in cash. Now, why do we have that 50% increase in cash? That will be found in your statement of cash flows. What was those things that, that made those changes, which could be the financing, investing, or your operations. And so that's some of the areas you look at to see that. One of the things here, as you can see, we have a reducing accounts receivable. So we are doing a little better about collecting the money that is owed to us. That is a good positive thing. And then supplies, looks like we have a decrease in that. There may be a reason because maybe we're not purchasing as many supplies as we, as, uh, we had in the past that we're using them more efficiently. And there may be inventory, the same thing here. Maybe we're moving towards a just in time or we're just reducing our inventory before the end of the year. So we're reducing some of those things and maybe our total assets is a little higher. But those are some of the things that we look at is what are the changes from year to year and how are we doing in those type of areas there. So this is just a snapshot of one portion of it. You'll do this a lot of times with your income statements and then also with the full balance sheet with all everything there. But I hope this has helped you understand how the horizontal analysis is used and how to calculate it. Thank you for listening to this video. I'm Dr. Fred Sutton, and you have a great day.